There are basically two ways to get somebody to do what you want. The first is you can threaten them, right? You can be like, hey, do what we say or we'll kill you. Or you can reward them. You can say, hey, if you do this thing that we want you to do, then we'll give you this thing that you want. Humans are hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain, so you can control them with pleasure or with pain. Now there's one super famous dystopian novel about a world where people are controlled with pain and fear, and that's 1984, right? In 1984, if you don't do what the government wants, then they kill you, or they send you to a re-education camp, or they torture you. It's not fun. But in Aldous Huxley's book, Brave New World, it's mostly the opposite, right? They mostly use pleasure, they promise you all these rewards, and all these, you know, you get to consume all this stuff, you get to eat all this delicious food, and you get to have all this promiscuous sex, and if you ever feel bad, you just take a pill and you don't feel bad anymore. They also condition you from childhood to not ask questions, to believe what you're told, and to not fear death. It's a world where everybody's happy all the time, and it's horrible. So how come a world where everybody's happy all the time, and nothing bad ever happens, and people don't grow old, and everybody loves their job, loves what they do, how come that's a dystopia and not a utopia? Well, the reason is because life kind of isn't meaningful without all the bad stuff, right? Like, the bad stuff is what makes the world fun. Like, imagine that you were playing a video game, and you just won all the time without ever having to struggle or ever having to go through any difficulty in order to win the game you would just stop playing that video game, right? It's the same way with life. We get meaning from doing hard things, and the things that we feel most proud of, and the things that we you know, tell stories about at bars and to our grandkids are the things where we did something really hard and we succeeded anyways. If you don't believe me, consider that the world is richer than it's ever been today, and people are still miserable. For a long time, philosophers have been saying that happiness is overrated, and the thing you really need to have a good life is meaning, right? Most recently, Jordan Peterson's been saying that. And when you read a book like Brave New World, it kind of makes it obvious. The catch is that the people in Brave New World don't really see it that way, right? The people in Brave New World, they've been raised from childhood to love the world they live in. They think it's awesome. They think, you know, all our problems are solved. We never have any issues. They get meaning enough from going to the movie theater and playing obstacle golf and having sex. But, obviously, their process for squeezing the human nature out of you and turning you into a little robot isn't perfect because every now and then you end up with a guy like Bernard Marx who isn't really satisfied with the world and he doesn't want to take Soma to solve his problems and he doesn't want to be part of the group, he doesn't want to do the orgy porgy ritual, so what do you do with a guy like him? And the answer is you've got to get rid of him, which is why they have this colony on Iceland where they send all the dissatisfied intellectuals. The problem with this is that people like Bernard Marx are the ones who create all the great art. They're the ones who do all the great science. They're the ones who make all the great inventions. So if you get rid of them, then your society is just going to stagnate. And that's kind of the whole point, right? Like, they don't want anything to come in and mess up the brave new world that they created. There's the scene where Mustafa Mons in his office reading the science paper, and he's like, wow, this is a really brilliant science paper, but if other people read it, it might mess things up, so we better not publish it. We better, we better, you know, keep an eye on this guy and make sure he doesn't write anything else. In a way, Bernard Marx represents science and technology, and John the Savage represents art, and... The world in Brave New World has no place for either one of them. When somebody wants to be edgy or make a point, they'll say that, oh, today's world is just like Brave New World, and I think there's some truth to that. Today, most Americans go to public school and are largely raised by the state and told what to believe by the state, and then they go out into the workforce and they have these menial jobs where they just do the same thing over and over again every day and they have very little meaning in their lives. That's basically exactly what's happening in Brave New World, right? Like the government is taking all these kids and putting them through the same conditioning program and then putting them to work in these factories where they do the same rote tasks day in and day out. America is the same thing, just kind of at a, a three out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. I think the biggest difference between Brave New World and today's America is that in Brave New World they try and keep people from hearing anything that might upset them or distress them, and if they do get upset or distressed then they tell them like, hey, take this pill. Whereas in America we're constantly being bombarded by messages that are designed to make us feel anxious and afraid. Right? Like if you turn on MSNBC or Fox News or CNN then you'll hear all these reasons why the world is ending and why everything is horrible and everything's about to go to shit and you should be afraid, yada yada yada, and it just it scares the crap out of you. Machiavelli said that the best way to control people is to get them to fear you and love you and that if you had to pick between one of the two you should choose fear. And he's kind of right, right? Like if, if people love you and they don't fear you then why are they going to do what you say? You know, why, like, loyalty can only take you so far. In 2024, you can't have the police threatening people with guns because they would stand up against it. They would be like, this is bad. We can't have this in our society. 
but you can get them afraid by painting this big vivid picture of all the things that are about to go wrong in their heads. And in Brave New World, they say they don't have fear and they say they don't have negative emotions, but really they do, right? Because they tell Bernard Marx, for example, hey, if you don't stop you know, being a weirdo and a loner and an introvert, and if you don't do the orgy porgy ritual with us, and if you don't do the things that we say, then we're gonna send you to Iceland, right? Or when, they, when John the Savage comes and throws all the soma pills out the window, they're telling the, the Deltas, like, hey, if you don't behave, if you don't get in line, then there's not gonna be any soma for anybody. Nobody's gonna get soma. So they do threaten people, right? Because how can you have a world where you get everybody to cooperate with one another where you don't threaten them from time to time? So anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for today's Theo's Book Club. Um, if you're new around here, my name is Theo. I make brief videos like this one um, about the books that I read so that you can get the big ideas and so you can learn everything that I learned and so you can decide, do I wanna read these books for myself? If you like this video, I hope you'll leave a thumbs up. That's right down there. That tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video and we should share it with more people. Um, you can also hit the subscribe button if you want more of these book review videos to pop up in your feed. And until next time, go do something meaningful and have a great day.